In this third part of the, of the UCAT, we're looking at how we actually live, how we actually put into practice our, our Catholic faith. And one of the things that's uh, really almost a unique facet of the, of the Catholic Church's teaching is that um, the, the, the Catholic Church gives us uh, not only instruction about how to live our lives individually, you know, to come to a holy life as an as a individual, uh, but also what makes for uh, a, a, a just society, how we live in communion and community uh, with one another. And, and this is called the church's social teaching, Catholic social, social teaching. And this is one of the great gifts of the Catholic Church, really, to, to the world, I believe. Uh, and it's under the heading in the UCAT of, of human community. And, and, and the UCAT sort of hits us right between the eyes, right off the bat as, as Americans, I think, where we're you know, such great rugged individualists. And it you know, points out to us that you know, our life of faith and actually just our life generally cannot be lived in a just sort of strictly individualistic way. And I really love this quotation from uh, the, the question, it's question number 321, can a Christian be a radical individualist? And part of the answer is just really funny, it's just so obvious, but I, I, let me share it with you. Every person has a mother and a father. He receives help from others and is obliged to help others and to develop his talents uh, for the benefit of all. You know, we don't live as, as, as just individuals. You know, we come to be actually out of this, uh, this the loving embrace of a, of a mother and father who are cooperating with, with God's will. We have relations with other people. And, and so we really do need to look very seriously at, the, uh, uh, at how our, our obligations to live our Catholic faith, um, how we do that in, in a, as a member of, uh, of a society. Um, the church's social teaching as a formal body uh, really uh, of teaching really began back in the 1800s under uh, Pope Leo XIII and it, at the time of the Industrial Revolution. He wrote an encyclical called Rerum Novarum uh, and started to grapple with you know, these, these things, injustices that were so apparent uh, you know, at, at, at that time. And the church ever since then, every single pope ever, ever since then has been very deeply concerned to, to, to develop and to further uh, this understanding of our responsibility uh, to live, to try to build a, a, a just society uh, as m members of the, of the human, human community. And so we've come up with th that with really four fundamental principles of Catholic social teaching. Uh, and this is actually in the, in the UK, one of their definitions. The definitions are usually in the little sidebar panels with a question mark next to them. And, and this one is actually at the very top of page 181, Catholic social teaching and social principles. The church is teaching about the ordering of life in society and about the attainment of individual and social justice. Its four central principles are personhood, the common good, solidarity, and subsidiarity. And so we're going to look at these four principles as we, as we go along and, and want to begin, first of all, with this idea of, actually it was the last one on that list, the idea of, of subsidiarity. And really, what does that mean? Well, basically, subsidiarity uh, means that what individuals can accomplish on their own uh, should not be taken away from them by a higher authority. And also what smaller or, or, or more local uh, groups can accomplish on their own should not be taken away from them by a, a higher authority. Basically, it's a, it's a, 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 the teaching is that it's better for things to be done uh, at a more at the grassroots level. You know, what, a, what an individual can take care of you know, for himself, he ought to do, and that, and that shouldn't be taken away from him. Or what a family uh, should take care of among themselves, and that sh they should do, and, and it shouldn't be taken away from them. Like, for example, the education of children. That's a, that's a prerogative of parents. It's one of their greatest responsibilities, and therefore it is also uh, their right, the right of parents to oversee uh, and to take the primary role in, in determining 
uh, their children's uh, education. It, that's a concept that's really helpful for us, I think, as America. Again, the, the church has sort of an interesting take on this concept of, of rights. You know, as Americans, we're always talking about, uh, we're gonna defend our rights. But the, and, and, and certainly the, the Catholic Church is a great champion of, of, of human rights. But there's, a, there's a, a, a depth of understanding of really what a right is and what the church teaches us. Rights don't just exist you know, on their, in a vacuum, just sort of on their own. Rights come from duties or obligations that we have. Like uh, I mentioned that example of parents have a duty or an obligation to see that their children receive an education. That's one of the most important obligations that a parent assumes about uh, their, uh, parents assume about their children. And therefore the church says because parents have that duty and obligation, they therefore have a right. The right derives from the duty or the obligation. And that's not the way that generally as Americans we think about rights. We think about rights just sort of existing on their own. But I think it really gives, a, gives us a, a depth uh, to understand really where rights come from and we realize rights exist in order to allow us to fulfill our obligations or our duties in, in society or as a member of a family or, or whatever it might be. And so that's a, that's a very helpful idea as well for us to, to understand that understanding of, 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 of rights. And so the, the church is in this, this principle of subsidiarity really favors smaller organizations uh, of, of people over you know, bigger or more collective ones. Uh, and and that, that, that the best level for something to be done at is really the smallest and closest to the, to the people who are, who are involved. Um, in every society though, however, there really does of course have to be authority. Without authority, there really is, can, can be no, can be no, there can be no soci society. Um, and yet those who exercise authority um, have to do so uh, legitimately. They, they can't, there are, there are, um, uh, there are really are, are rules to that. It's not just, okay, I've got the power so I can do whatever I want. And this is where that principle of the common good comes in. Authority is always exercised in society for the common good or ought to always be exercised uh, for the common good. Um, this means that, that individual fundamental rights and obligations always need to be respected for bringing about the, the flourishing of, of society, that those things cannot be uh, overridden just because someone has the, has the power to do so. And so, we, um, and so society is organized always for the common good not for the good of particular people or particular interests. That's why, now of course people organize themselves and can have, this is another really neat thing about the church's social teaching. Um, it, it is a, these are real matters of, of principle and morality, but there's a good deal of, of, of pluralism there, of, of legitimate differences of opinions that people can have about how you actually live this out. And for example, like in, in, there can be different kind of political parties or, or things like that where people can legitimately uh, you know, disagree with each other about what's the best way to achieve the common good uh, in a society. Of course, there are limits to that, limits of, of morality to that. But these principles of the, of, of the Catholic social teaching help us to, to um, be able to, to, to uh, to stay in in accord with the church's teaching, and yet also to respect the freedom that God really gives us all as we you know, organize ourselves in, uh, as families, as individuals, uh, in, in communities and, and different groups that we, uh, we, we join in with. And so um, it's, a, it, it is a, it's for the, the fostering of, this, of, of the common good um, that the church gives us its, her social teaching. The most fundamental principle of the church's social teaching, Catholic social teaching, really I would say is that, that that's founded on the concept of, of personhood, uh, of the dignity of the human person. The human person is always the, the benchmark of any of these uh, decisions. If, if, if um, some sort of organization or grouping or 
decision uh, promotes and respects the dignity of the human person, um, then that is something that's probably for, for the common good. Uh, if it does not, if it violates the dignity of the individual human person, uh, then it is most definitely something that, that is not for the common good and is really contrary to the church's social teaching. Because we know that all human beings, all of us, are, are, have, a, have a certain equality uh, of dignity. We have an equality um, as human beings because we are uh, crea created by, by God. And we are uh, we share in his in his very likeness and in his his life, and so this common origin and this common destiny that we share uh, gives us as human beings a a common um, uh, dignity, uh, and also this longing that God has placed in our hearts, this desire that we all have to achieve the fulfillment and 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 happiness, as we've talked about from the very beginning of this. Uh, study uh, of the UCAT uh, is something that, that has to be respected and allowed to flourish and allowed to develop. And so this is the basis really of, of, of human dignity and, and human rights, uh, the dignity of the human person uh, founded on, on equality and, and the, the demands of, of justice. Well, you know, one of the things that's very evident when we look at the church's social teaching, it's really actually what prompted the church's social teaching to, to come about in the, in the first place. Why, why Pope Leo XIII was moved to write the document uh, Rerum Novarum back in the 1800s was that he saw the incredible injustice that existed in the world, the incredible brutality that was exercised against you know, the human dignity. Uh, the, all, the many, many offenses to the dignity uh, uh, of the human person that existed. And why is this? Why is there this inequality? Why is there this injustice that exists in the world? Well, fundamentally, um, it is a spiritual problem. It is the problem of sin entering into the world. Uh, the sinful choices and selfish choices uh, of human beings that we exercise against our, our brothers and sisters. And so that is the, uh, that is the source of, um, of injustice. And this leads us to the, um, to the, uh, the concept of, 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 of solidarity, of the fact that we are uh, really united with one another. Um, as human beings, we have much, many, many more things in common with one another. Uh, then we do things that, that separate us, that, that common dignity that we have, the dignity of the human person. And that really gives us a solidarity among ourselves as human beings. Um, you all are too, too young to remember this, but old people like me remember that uh, at the time of the, uh, you've maybe read about this in history books, um, but at the fall of, uh, of atheistic communism in Eastern Europe uh, was brought about through the work uh, very much of, of Pope, blessed John Paul the Great, um, uh, who came from Poland, of course, uh, and, and lay men and women who in that society were dedicated to these principles that we have been talking about of Catholic social teaching, were informed by that, and really would not allow themselves uh, without protest, without uh, resistance, uh, to have their, their, that, that basic human dignity uh, taken away from them. And one of the instruments of that was actually a labor union that was formed called Solidarity. wonder where they got that name, what do you think? Uh, this idea that we are um, uh, called together in our, our solidarity and our dignity as, as, as human beings, uh, not just to look out for our own well-being, but to be concerned for the well-being of all of our brothers and sisters, and not just the people like in our own family or in our own neighborhood, but really throughout the world, that we really have a, 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 a responsibility uh, through this principle of solidarity uh, for the well-being of, of all of, of humanity, that we can't just simply say, well, you know, I'm okay here, or my family's okay, or, or you know, my, country is okay when there are others who are 
who are who are suffering, whose human dignity is is not respected, especially if there are ways in which uh, we can, um, through justice and charity, uh, reach out to them and and express our our, our solidarity with them. Um, this brings us into another idea, a very basic principle of the Catholics of the Church's social teaching, which goes back even before there was a, a concept of the Church's social teaching, and that is the concept of, of natural law. That there is a, a certain law that is actually sort of written on the very heart or the very being of, of, of humanity that arises from our nature. That's why it's called natural law. There are just certain things that, that pertain to being a human being, uh, and that are the law for all, that, that it, it's, it is your uh, right or your duty or obligation just because you're a human being. That's where it, it rises from. It's not something that you earn or somebody else grants to you. Um, again, we tend to take the concept of human rights, at least here in the United States, uh, very uh, maybe take them for granted because our, our, our country was founded on, on, on the, that idea. And yet there are many times and many places throughout the world where, where even the, the existence of, of human rights is called into question. We really actually live in a time in which people call into question any sort of, of absolute, even the idea that, that there are certain things that are just never compatible uh, to the dignity of the human person that would be against human rights. You know, like for example, the use of, of torture, for example, is, is contrary to the dignity of the human person, is therefore a violation of, uh, of human rights always and for everybody. It's not just a particular group of people or can't be waived in, in certain circumstances. And so uh, natural law is something, you know, no legislature or lawmaker ever has to sit down and, and give you your natural rights. Now they might try to take them away from you, and sometimes they do. And sometimes we live in a, a time and a situation in which natural rights are trampled on. But, but those natural rights are yours, are ours, by virtue of our uh, common, common humanity. And we can learn a lot from that. Uh, by, by, by observing the world, observing human nature, the dignity of the human person, these other principles of, of Catholic social teaching, and using our reason, we can see how they, the, the application of them. It's one of the reasons, for example, how the church over time came to understand that slavery, for example, is completely incompatible with the dignity of the, of the, human, of the human person. You know, if, if you look in the New Testament, slavery is just sort of a part of society, and yet over history as, as, as Christian concepts of the dignity of the human person and, and human rights came to uh, imbue all of society, then we, we came to see that, 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 that slavery, for example, must be rejected as being completely contrary to the, to the dignity uh, of the human person. Um, in addition to, uh, in addition to um, the natural law, there is the law that God has, himself has given to us, has revealed to us. Uh, for example, the, the law of the old, co of the old covenant, the, the law contained in, in the Old Testament, the Torah, or maybe especially as in our best known part of that um, in, in the Ten Commandments. Um, God helped us to, to come to know many of the precepts of the natural law by revealing them to us so that they weren't hidden from us anymore, but were a part of his love and his revelation of himself to us.